the messy objects tend to be either really star clusters in the Milky Way, or they tend to be galaxies independent of our own Milky Way galaxy. And Messier 54 is kind of neither of those. So it's a globular cluster, which is one of these really old, dense star clusters, but it's in a, it's in a, a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way. So it's a globular cluster in its own wimpy dwarf galaxy. And a, a wimpy dwarf galaxy that was only discovered 20 years ago. And you kind of think, a galaxy that's only the halfway distance to the, to the large Maginot Cloud, you'd think you've known about for hundreds of years, thousands of years, since millennia. But in fact, it's one which is a very, very faint galaxy orbiting the Milky Way. So if this is our Milky Way disk here, and if, say, the Sun is at the end of my finger, and the center of Milky Way is here, this is kind of, it's in a kind of polar orbit. And it's right now on the far side of a Milky Way, kind of, not hidden, but partially obscured behind all the stars in the Milky Way, which means it's really been hard to find. So that the, the object is Messier 54, which is in the center of this Sagittarius dwarf galaxy. And, the, and, and the, because of the tidal forces that, that, that this galaxy is experiencing as it's kind of in orbit around a much more massive thing, it's kind of being ripped apart, being tidally disrupted because of the Milky Way's colossal mass. So, it, so basically what we find is actually there's kind of um, streams of stars being ripped off this galaxy. Uh, the cluster itself is a very dense thing. So basically it's kind of relatively immune to the gravitational field of the Milky Way. But the kind of other, other stars in the, in the parent galaxy, the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, are kind of being ripped, up, ripped, up, ripped off. And so it's kind of a tidal tail of stars which are ending up in our Milky Way's halo. And so the galaxy is quite small. The mass of the galaxy is maybe a billion solar masses. The mass of the globular cluster, Messier 54, is maybe a million solar masses. So it's one of the most massive globular clusters associated with the Milky Way galaxy, even if it's in its own galaxy. Professor, how could we know about a globular cluster in a galaxy and not know about the galaxy? Isn't that, a, isn't that like seeing New York but not seeing America? Well, I think the problem is, is that you kind of historically we've thought of Star clusters as kind of low mass, small things, and we've thought of galaxies as big, bright things. But if you kind of go between the, the extremes, a, uh, a very small galaxy, a very dwarf, a dwarf galaxy, and so the Milky Way is a very big, giant galaxy, really. Um, a dwarf galaxy can be quite small and faint because really it's the, it's the stars in that galaxy which you're seeing. And the stars, if the, star, if the galaxy hasn't formed stars in the last many billions of years, it's pretty faint. And so, in fact, the, 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 the globular cluster was discovered uh, hundreds of years ago. But it was only really since discovery of the parent dwarf galaxy, which is very diffuse and very faint, that we actually have, have connected the two. So we kind of thought this, this globular cluster, which was just in the halo of our Milky Way, was just kind of hanging out there in the halo. In fact, it turns out to have been connected to this very tenuous, quite massive, but quite kind of stretched out dwarf galaxy, which is right now passing through the Milky Way. And it's a bit like in Star Trek, where you know, the Borg in the Star Trek, the kind of Borg assimilate. And the Milky Way is kind of the Borg assimilating all the stars ultimately in this, in this dwarf galaxy. As the Sagittarius galaxy you know, is assimilated into the Milky Way and dies out. What's going to yeah. happen to this cluster? Will the band stay together? Well, I, I'd say that uh, my impression is that the, the galaxy is being ripped apart, but the globular cluster is quite small and quite dense and a lot of mass in there, you know, of order of a million solar masses, which means that I imagine it might end up being just seen as a, a, another halo globular cluster. I think it's going to survive long term or medium term anyway, whereas its parent galaxy is already in its kind of last stages. It's pretty exciting that we're still finding stuff that close. Yeah, so again, if we go back, you know, more than 20 years, we knew of a few dwarf galaxies orbiting the Milky Way. I mean, the, the biggest galaxy in what we might call a satellite galaxy Milky Way is the LMC followed by the SMC. These are kind of big, bright things, diffuse, but kind of big and bright. And there's lots of these little dwarf galaxies that we've now found, including a Sagittarius dwarf. Which um, and so the kind of total numbers is probably in there several dozen uh, of little little guys, um, and this is probably one which 
if we go back a few billion years, would have been maybe comparable maybe to the SMC. Uh, but right now, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of dying out, really, just because of it being ripped apart. And we'll, we'll end up, really, in the, in the halo, stars in the halo. Um, and, but the globular cluster, I, I imagine, would survive uh, long term because it's, it's so, so dense. Poor old Charles Messier had no idea what he was looking at, did he? No, he didn't know. And really, you know, for a long time, it was known as simply a, a halo galactic globular cluster. But really, it's actually a very interesting object at, at, at the centre of a very interesting dwarf galaxy.